Okay, interesting integral here today. We've got something from the UK integration. It should be 2024, number 13. We have the integral from zero to one, x minus one over x plus one, ln x dx. Okay, this is number two in a set of 10. <laughs> okay, this is one I did previously, and I did say in that video that I was gonna do 10 videos on it. I'm getting a little nervous because I really only have two written out, so I don't know if I can get to three or what, but if I can get to 10 methods, I'll do 10 methods. But this one, the method I have here in this one is actually, I think, a bit longer. I kind of like this one better. There might be a couple flaws in it, but at least I have a second method to do, so let's just get into it. In the first video where we started was, I think, a series expansion on x plus 1. What I want to do here is get straight into Feynman's trick on this and parameterize it. So how I'm going to do it, I want to create the parameter on the x just because that's going to work well. That's kind of like we've done videos like this in the past where we had just this setup where we had x to the a, and then we get cancellation with the l and x. So we want to try something kind of similar to that, except we got this x plus 1 that we're bringing along. So let's parameterize this. We're going to create some variable a, and what we'll do is we'll create it on the x in the numerator. So we'll have x to the a minus 1. And then let's make a note on it that our goal, this original thing, is really just going to be f of 1. So if we can find our f of a, plug in 1, we get back to our solution on this. But another thing we can use here is just notice what happens when a equals 0 for our f of 0 value. x to the 0 is 1. The numerator becomes 0. The whole integral becomes 0. So we'll have this value to come back to later. And so next, let's just go ahead and differentiate this, differentiating with respect to a. Using Feynman's trick, what we want to do is we want to differentiate inside the integral sign as a partial with respect to a on this. But when I do it, See, all this, all this stuff in the denominator is just going to be a constant with respect to a, so we'll kind of split it up like this. We'll worry about differentiating x to the a minus 1, and then as a constant, we'll just have all this other stuff over here. And then we'll just go ahead with this derivative on it. Now just notice, when you differentiate 1, that's just going to be a 0, so we don't worry about that part. Then, here, let's move this constant part over here, so we'll just bring that down. And then we want to differentiate x to the a here. Just keeping in mind that x is a constant, this is kind of like the case when we differentiate, say, 3 to the x, then this is actually just going to be 3 to the x ln 3. So we'll just kind of use the formula on that, and what we get is we'll have x to the a ln x here, and then a dx on the end. Then we can just cancel out the ln x's here, get rid of this nonsense, and let me just clean this up a little bit. And then let me actually just kind of create a 1 in right here, because what I want to do is... I do want to do a series expansion now, geometric series on this part right here. So at this point, it seems like we're just doing the same thing as the other video in a different order. It's not really true because things get really different in a minute, but right now this part is kind of similar to what we did in the other video, which was I take this and for x plus one, let's just write it as one minus minus x, because that's going to allow me to use the geometric series formula on this, which is going to be n from zero to infinity. If this was just an x here, our formula is just x to the n, where we want, where we need the absolute value of x to be less than 1. But the only difference is we're inputting a minus x here. So let's just write it minus x here, minus x here. Now, of course, a minus sign is not going to matter inside absolute value. Our bounds tell us our x values are always between 0 and 1. So this is fine. We've got our convergence on this. And so what we can do is take this right here, plug it in our integral for the 1 over x plus 1 value, rewriting our f prime a value. Let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to, we still have this x to the a, so let's bring that, let's leave that up front for the moment. Plug in all this stuff. And then let's just take our x to the a, distribute it inside here, which is fine. But also let me split up this minus 1 separately. So what's going to happen when we do this and rewrite it, I'm going to have this piece here as a minus 1 to the n in front. Then we're going to have x to the n times x to the a. This is going to be x to the, let's write it as x to the n plus a dx. Then let's just swap the integral with the series here. We're okay to do this because with the geometric series we just showed, it was absolutely convergent. So let's flip this. We'll bring the series to the outside on it. Integrate from 0 to 1, but now I'm going to treat this piece as a constant because we just have an n in it, so it's constant with respect to x. So let me actually put this out front here. Then we're just integrating x to the n plus a, but that's pretty nice because that's just power rule. Everything here is a constant, so we can just go ahead and integrate this thing, just having the series out front. Integral of this is going to be x to the n plus a plus 1. 
over the same constant, n plus a plus one, just evaluate it from zero to one. Evaluating at zero, that's nothing. Evaluate one, doesn't matter what the exponent is, one to anything is gonna be one. Putting this all together with our sum, what's gonna happen, we just have this minus one to the n in the numerator, all over this stuff, n plus a plus one. And now we have our f prime a in terms of a series. What I wanna do is let's work on what can we do with this. You will notice this is just the alternating harmonic series just starting at a, I think. So you could shift it and express it that way, but then it's not quite clear how we get back to f of a with that. So what I wanna to do to work on this is let's use the digamma function in order to try to simplify this thing. Okay, now for the next step, we wanna to try to simplify this. And what I wanna do is split this up into the even and odd terms. You will notice, I think this is actually cheating right here because we don't have absolute convergence on this right here. So I don't think I'm allowed to do this, but I'm gonna do it just to keep going because I know it's gonna work. But let me know in the comments if there's some way to justify it. I'm gonna kind of break the rules right here and just do it because I know it's gonna to get to the right answer. But what I'm talking about is on the absolute convergence, if you think about having absolute value on it, then the minus one's gonna go away. You have something like one over n. 1 over n diverges by p series. So anyway, hopefully you can forgive me or we'll or we can work it out in the comments to see what's going on. But let me just do this. So we'll go ahead and we want to split this again into the odd and even parts. So to first get the even terms on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 2n in for n. You could do a different variable, but I'm just going to do it like this and keep it the same way and just plug a 2n in for n in order to get the even part. Doing it here, we end up with Let's write it as 2n plus 1 plus a here. And then for the next part, we do the same thing for the odd terms, just plugging in 2n plus 1 for the n everywhere. So we're going to have minus 1, 2n plus 1 here. And then this is going to become 2n plus 2 plus a here. I know it looks kind of strange just because notice this is actually an odd number. This is actually an even number. But in fact, what happens if you just start expanding out terms, what we have on the right is going to be exactly the same as what we have on the left. Then because we have an even exponent on minus one here, minus one with an even power is gonna be just a one, so we'll get rid of that. And then same thing over here, or similar thing, odd exponent on minus one, this is always gonna be a minus one here. And then now because I've got a two in front of the n on both these, let's factor out a one half to simplify it. So it's gonna happen, we'll have one half in front on this. And let's put it back in one sum. I actually didn't need to break it up. We could just leave it as one sum the whole time. So we have this. On the first one, when we factor a two out from the denominator, we get n plus, let's write it as a plus one over two here. And then for the second part, let's bring the minus out front of this. And then here for the second one, we're gonna have again n, but then this piece is gonna be a plus two over two. But then the thing you might notice here is this is starting to look a lot like our series expansion for the digamma function. Let's look at that formula and then we're just gonna have to manipulate it into that exact form. Okay, so we have our formula over here to the right for the digamma function where we have a series kind of like this, and then we're subtracting off the Euler-Mascheroni constant here. This is something like 0 0.577. The thing we want to deal with is over here, we really don't have this. We have kind of like this n plus z type of thing where if like you imagine this is our z and this is our z, so that's kind of good for an input, but we don't have a one plus n, we don't have a one over n plus one anywhere. So what I want to do is just kind of create that by what we can do is if we add in a one over n plus one in here somewhere, and then we subtract it, then we're just adding zero to our problem, but we're kind of forcing this to happen. So how this is gonna work, actually let me like put this one with this one, and this one with this one, let's just see how it's gonna work. So if we write this, and I will break it, I am gonna create this in two series now because we want it to look like this. So let's see, we'll have this going zero to infinity here. I'm just gonna copy down this piece right here, and then we'll subtract off the one over n plus one over here. So that's gonna be our first part. And then for our second sum, we'll use this one right here. So this one's gonna be one over n plus one minus this stuff. And this is looking pretty good because this second one here, it's in exactly this form here, where the z value is gonna be just this a plus two over two. So this matches this. Now over here, the only trouble we have is we're out of order because we want the n plus one first subtracted by the n plus c. Well, that's real easy. All I can do, we can just change the sign here and then bring a minus up front. And then I can just swap the order here to make it look pretty. And so now this one is set up exactly like this, where this right here is gonna be our z value, our input into the digamma function. Now to use this, I kind of want to isolate the series. I don't really want it quite like this. So all we need to do for that is if I just add 
the Euler Mascheroni constant on both sides, then now we've got a formula for this type of series in terms of just the digamma function plus the Euler Mascheroni constant. So what's gonna happen when we do this, we have our one half in front here. This, we're just gonna use the formula now. We're gonna have digamma of our z, which is this right here. So we're gonna have digamma a plus one over two plus the constant. And then here for the second one, same kind of thing basically, digamma of a plus two over two plus the constant. One small mistake, we do have a minus sign right there that I forgot about. And I need to distribute the minus into the constant right here, but that's nice because then we have plus the constant minus it, so these are gonna cancel out, that's just gonna be a zero. And so let's just clean this up a little bit and see what we have. We're gonna have just digamma a plus two over two minus digamma a plus one over two all over two. So now we have this value for our f prime of a right here. So we need to clean this up. As you can see, you can't really accuse this of being a short method, right? This is not gonna be your fast way, but this is gonna still be an interesting way. Let's continue on and try to clean this thing up. Okay, now for the cleanup, I was kind of thinking about this the wrong way, because in some other videos I did, we did some, like we used the reflection formula and multiplication formula, there's some ways to reduce this, but I don't know if you can use any of that when you've got an A in it. So what I wanna do instead here is, let's just, we need to get back to F of A for our goal. So what we wanna do is let's just integrate on both sides of this with respect to A. But how are we gonna integrate the digamma function? Well, actually that part's not too bad because we just have our definition for the digamma function, which defines it as a derivative. We're gonna have this as the derivative with respect to Z of natural log of the gamma function of z. So if this thing is really a derivative, this becomes pretty easy to integrate. Let's take this two and bring it out front here as a one half, just to kind of try to simplify it a little bit. So then when we integrate this, the thing I always forget when I do this is we still need the chain rule. So we integrate this, we use this, we're gonna get back natural log gamma of z but kind of doing it like a u substitution in your head, like whenever you, if we had like the integral of e to the x over two, then we have one half here, so a two is gonna come out front. Same exact thing on this one, this is gonna be two times natural log of gamma. I don't really want z there, I wanna plug in what's here. So this is gonna be a plus one over two here. This one's gonna be a plus two over two. And then we're still gonna have a plus c on the end of this. Well, half is gonna cancel out these twos here. And so now we've got this thing as our f of a value, but we don't really like having the plus c in here. And that's why we got this way back, like an hour ago at the beginning of this video, is we want this in order to evaluate for c. So what I'm gonna do is we just wanna plug in a zero here for a. Doing that, you plug a zero in here, we have natural log of gamma of, the a goes away and this just becomes gamma of one here. And then doing the same kind of thing over here. We have natural log gamma, this is gonna become one half plus C. And we're saying this, all this stuff needs to be equal to zero. Well, we have the way to express the gamma function for integers in terms of factorials, just subtracting one. This is gonna be the same thing as zero factorial or one. Natural log of one is zero. So that part goes away. It's very useful to just remember this one value being square root of pi. And so then just kind of to make this clear, we're saying C minus natural log square root of pi equals zero. So therefore, c is gonna be natural log square root of pi. So let's take this, throw it back in there for c, just to get our f of a value, because we're almost, we're almost at the end. Because we're almost there, so our f of a value is gonna be just kind of copying stuff down, natural log gamma a plus two over two minus natural log gamma a plus one over two. And then we have our plus c, which is just gonna be natural log square root pi. Then let's just remember what we're doing. Back to our original problem, we, we, we need a to be equal to one just because this exponent on the x is one. All we need to do is plug in one down here. Doing this, let's look at f of one. So we get really similar to kind of what we did here. Natural log, plug a one in here and you get natural log gamma three halves. Then here we get minus natural log gamma, plug a one in two over two. Same thing we saw over here. This is gonna be zero factorial, natural log of one. This piece is going away. And then we have our natural log square root of pi here. 
So let's just get this part out of here so we're clear what's happening. The only thing we need to do, let's just deal with gamma of three halves. We have this formula, remember the gamma function is related to the factorial. So like if you have, we can just look at it like this. For, that, for gamma of z plus one, we can write this as z times gamma of z. So when we have gamma of three halves, I can just subtract, from, I can just subtract one from this and write it as one half gamma of one half. But what we saw earlier, we kind of memorized this value again, square root of pi. So this value is gonna be square root of pi over two. So then coming down here, plugging that in here, we got natural log square root of pi over two plus natural log square root of pi. Log properties, combine these together inside the natural log, multiplying what's inside, square root of pi times square root of pi is pi over two. For my final solution of this, we just get natural log pi over two. So again, this is probably not the quick way. I hope the UK integration bee doesn't have like a two minute time limit because there's no way I'm doing this in two minutes, just to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm not even sure I can do it in five minutes. I could do it a little faster than doing a video, but I still don't know if I could do this with a time limit. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.